All right, so today we want to look at the quotient rule. Now, we've seen that derivatives are not well behaved with respect to products, right? It's not just the derivative of a product is the product of the derivatives, unfortunately. We got the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So we got this rule when we multiply two functions together. Well, quotient, division, right? If I'm dividing two functions, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the function, right? Division is the same as dividing by a fraction or multiplying by a fraction, um, dividing by the reciprocal, anyhow. So, of course, if pr products, if multiplication isn't well behaved, then quotients or division isn't well behaved. So we've got a separate rule to deal with the division of two functions as well. So what we're looking for is the derivative with respect to x of f of x over g of x, right? The quotient. Now, we've already developed the product rule and the chain rule. So let's just quickly remember those. We went over the product rule a second ago. Uh, the derivative with respect to x of f times g is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, there's our product rule. And chain rule was the derivative with respect to x, or de derivative of y with respect to x, is the derivative of y with respect to u, where u is the inside function, so we're taking the derivative of the outside function, remember chain rule is for composites, so we have a function inside of another function. dy du, that, that's the derivative of the outside function, not worrying about the, the function inside, just treating it as a variable in itself, it's u. Then, we can't forget, we've got to multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. So that's the derivative of that inside function just in the normal fashion. So with respect to its variable. Okay, so we've got our product rule and quotient rule. Now we could go back to the definition, the limit definition of the derivative, and derive the quotient rule by going through and doing all that x plus delta x minus f at x stuff. But since we've already got these tools and we know that division is simply multiplying by the reciprocal, we can leverage the work that we've already done, right? And make life a little bit easier at least. This proof becomes a bit slicker if we look at it that way. Okay, so instead of having f of x divide by g of x, I'm gonna say, well, this is the same thing as multiplying f of x times, now we have an overload of symbols, right? If I just write g to the negative one of x here, that's gonna mean g inverse. The negative one power on function notation means to take the inverse, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the negative one power outside with brackets just to make absolute sure that we're aware this is not the inverse, it's one over, literally. It's the reciprocal, okay? So we're gonna go multiply g of x to the negative one power. All right, so that's one over g of x, not g inverse. Nice, well now we've rewritten this as a product. That means we can leverage the rule that we've already got, sweet. So we've got the derivative of the first, so we'd need to take the derivative of f times the second function. Okay. So g of x to the negative one power. Right, so there's the derivative of f times g plus. Now we need f, well that's f times the derivative of g, or the derivative of the second one. So we need the derivative of this. The derivative with respect to x of g of x to the negative one power. Now let's see what we've got. Here we need to do this derivative of f. f is given, so that's something that we can work out. Just, you give me f, I'll just take its derivative here. 
Okay, this is just a normal function, so that's fine. I'm just going to take that and put it downstairs. Great. There's my f. That's just a normal function as well. Here, though, I still haven't done this derivative. I still have a command there, okay? Because this is a composite function. We have g of x inside this 1 over x, or to the negative 1 power there. So this is why I need the chain rule. Here we use the product rule, and now I'm going to need the chain because I have this g of x inside 1 over x. So I still need to do that derivative. So this stuff's just coming along for the ride for a minute. g of x to the negative 1 plus f of x. Okay, now, chain rule. I'm going to take the derivative of the outside. So I'm ignoring this g of x, or I could just call it u, but why bother? And so I'm doing a power rule. I have to the negative 1 power. So I'll bring that down. Negative power, negative 1. I'm ignoring everything inside. I'm just treating that as a unit, right? This is chain rule with respect to u, which is my g of x. So brought my power down, subtract 1. Sweet. So there's the derivative of the outside. That's dy du. Can't forget, chain rule, I still need to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. You say, well, that means I need to multiply by... The inside function is g, so that's just the derivative of g. I'm given g, so that's something I just take its derivative. Great, so that's like this. g prime of x, that's the derivative of g. Okay, so this is our chain rule. We did the derivative of the outside, ignoring what's inside, but then can't forget we still need to take the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, let's see what we've got now. We've got the derivative of f over g, right? That just drops downstairs. Well, let's see, there's a negative sign there, so that's this minus, so let's flip that. Minus f at x. We've got the derivative of g. And then this drops downstairs, right? That's a square and then downstairs. So we've got g of x squared down here. Nice, we are very, very close now. We really were done. We could leave it that way, but it's not gonna be hard to get a common denominator, right? All I need to multiply by is g of x here to get a g of x squared downstairs. So that'll be easy enough. Let's do it in one more line. Actually, I'll do it right here. So I'll have f prime of x, so the derivative of f, times another g. So we have f prime of x times g minus f times the derivative of g. all over g squared, right? So I found my common denominator and combined. And that's the, the quotient rule. Now, when we learned the product rule, we said, okay, we're gonna take the derivative of the first first, right? And the derivative of the second second. It didn't matter because it's a sum. In the quotient rule, we have a difference this time, right? That negative came out over here in our chain rule. Subtraction is not commutative, so it does matter what order they come in. So I always call this one the first, since we read like three quarters, right? We read the numerator first and the denominator second. So the first and the second. If you always remember the first, the derivative of the first comes first, the derivative of the second comes second, then you know what order they go in, right? So I take the derivative of the first times the second minus the first times the derivative of the second over the second squared. That's the quotient rule. There's kind of a cool little rhyme, an easy way to remember. So the two things that I keep in my mind trying to remember that quotient rule 
is the derivative of the second comes second, so I know which order they're in, and this little rhyme just to always double check myself. So it goes high, high D low, minus, uh, I reversed them again. Yeah, low D high, I always make that mistake in my head too, and I have to do it again, but the rhyme will fix it. So, so low D high minus high D low, all over the square of what's below. Low D high minus high D low, all over the square of what's below. So. Low D high minus high D low all over the square of what's below. And just re remembering all over the square of what's below, that always helps me remember the order of the rhyme, and that also helps you remember the order of, uh, of your numerator there. Nice. Okay, so there's our quotient rule. That's how we deal with division of two functions. Let's try couple examples here. Let's say we want to find the derivative with respect to x of, let's go with, uh, say, sine of x over x cubed. Okay. Now, if you were to hand me this problem in, out of the blue, right? The first thing I'm gonna to try to do, I'm gonna look at this and go, it's a division, right? I have got work to do, one way or another. Can't get out of it. But if you handed me like a, say a quartic function divide by a cubic, like an x to the fourth power upstairs, then I could just actually do the polynomial division. I could just do the division and then I've got power rules. So I'd be out of the division and I wouldn't have to work, worry about it anymore. So sometimes I might just, my first resort is gonna be, is there any algebra that I can use to simplify this and get out of the division? Maybe I can factor the numerator and there's a common denominator and then there isn't a division anyway, right? But I've got a transcendental function, this trigonometric function sine here. So there's no algebra really to be done there divided by a polynomial function, so. No, there's no algebra. There's no way I'm going to get out of it. So I'm stuck with the division, which means I'm going to have to go uh, quotient rule. Okay. So I'm just following the formula. I'm going to take the derivative of the first. So the derivative of the numerator. Let's just write it out for now. I've got the derivative of the first, so the derivative of sine of x, times the second, so times x cubed minus the first, or the numerator, sine of x, times, I've got the derivative of the second, the derivative of the denominator here, derivative of x cubed. Okay, and this will be all over the denominator squared, so x cubed squared. All right, so there we've just applied our, fun, our, our formula here. Now we haven't actually done the derivatives yet. We've taken care of the fact that it's a quotient, but we still have these commands, right? So once we do those commands, then we just look to see if there's anything we can simplify and we're done. So let's see, derivative of sine. Well, let's see, sine is here, cos, negative sine negative cos, so the derivative of the sine is cosine, cosine of x, times x cubed. Okay, I'll just pull that out front, just so it looks a little prettier. Minus, now we have the sine of x. Actually, I'm going to leave a gap because it looks like we're going to have another polynomial there. Derivative of x cubed with respect to x, that's a power rule. So I bring my 3 down, subtract 1 from the power, 3x squared. 
3x squared. So there's the derivative of that first function times the second minus the derivative of the second function times the first. I just reversed the orders. And we've got x cubed squared. Power to power, we multiply. So that's x to the sixth. Okay. Okay. so beautiful, a little better. <laughs> All right, and that's it. So we've taken the quotient rule and applied it there. Let's try, well, I don't know how long to make this, because we can use it to do a whole bunch of, we're going to see it like to do trig functions and stuff. We can use a quotient rule. Uh, but let's just try one more for good measure here. Uh, let's try the derivative with respect to x. Uh, I don't want it to be too redundant now. How about 3x plus 2 divided by the cosine of... 4x to the fifth. We'll clean this up a little bit. All right. So let's take a look. We're not going to be able to get out of that division, right? There's no algebra to be done. I suppose we could split at the sum, right? We can split a numerator apart, common denominator backward, and then deal with each of the uh, derivatives separately. And what I'm saying is we could, there is a rule that says we can split sums. So I could look at it this way. The derivative with respect to x, 2 over cosine 4x to the fifth, like that, right? So undo that common denominator, split it apart, and then treat each derivative separately. That's one option. I you know, might think that through, but I'm not gaining any advantages, right? There's, that's not going to allow me to fi uh, find a common factor and simplify or do anything. I'm still stuck with quotient, and in fact, now I have two quotients that I have to deal with. So... The algebra in this case is actually making more work for myself. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to treat the numerator as a unit, the denominator as a unit, and use the quotient rule. It's a division. I can't really get out of it, not in any meaningful way. So I might as well just go with it. So let's see. We have the derivative of the first, the derivative with respect to x of 3x plus 2, our numerator, times the second the denominator, cosine 4x to the fifth, minus the first, so our numerator here, 3x plus 2, times, then we have the derivative of our denominator, the derivative of cosine of 4x to the fifth. And that's all over denominator squared. So we just got cosine of 4x to the fifth squared. Okay, there we have, oh, we've applied our quotient rule formula. Now I still have derivatives to do, right? These are still commands in here. Uh, so let's see, derivative of 3x plus 2, derivative of constant is 0. Derivative of 3x is just 3, so this is just 3 cosine. That's not too bad. 3 cosine 4x to the fifth minus, I've got the 3x plus 2, and the derivative of cosine of 4x to the fifth. Let's see, this is a composite function. I have 4x to the fifth inside of the cosine. So I need to use chain rule. I'll take the derivative of the outside, so the derivative of cosine 
negative sign. This is a multiply, right? I'm times this. Maybe I'll just put it here like that. Negative sign. That's the derivative of the cosine of whatever is inside. I'm just ignoring the 4x to the fifth. Okay, so that's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. I still need to do du dx. So that's a power rule. I need to take the derivative of 4x to the fifth, that inside function. So times chain rule, power rule. 5 times 4 gives me 20. Subtract 1, x to the fourth. Okay, and then all over. Let's just make that the cosine squared of 4x to the fifth. At this point, all the calculus is done. We've used the quotient rule formula to take care of the fact that that was a division. And then we've now done the derivatives that resulted as part of that formula, right? Those commands to take the derivative of f and take the derivative of g. We've just done that. To do the derivative of g, we needed a chain rule because it was a composite function. So all the calculus is done now. At this point, it's all just algebra. We're just distributing stuff through and simplifying, combining like terms. From here on out, it's just algebra two, right? Let's see, we've got three cosine four x to the fifth. Uh, okay. We've got lots of minuses floating around here. So let's see, this is gonna be a minus three times this minus here. So that'll be a plus. Let's see, three times 20 is 60. X times X to the fourth is X to the fifth. And then sine, sine of four X to the fifth. Okay, now this would be a negative 2, again times a negative, so that's still plus, and we have 2 times 20 gives me 40, uh, x to the 4th, sine of 4x to the 5th. I think that takes care of everything, it's just distributing you know, this unit through here and here, I'm multiplying that. Uh, I think I was okay with my signs because that was a negative times a negative, and that was a negative times a negative, so they're both positive. And then this is all over cosine squared. Now, we could maybe pull out a common factor of sine there and then have 60x to the fifth plus 40x to the fourth, but meh, going around in circles, right? So that's good enough. That'd be it. Okay, so that's the quotient rule. High D, low D high minus high D low all over the square of what's below. So the derivative of the first times the second minus the first times the derivative of the second all over the second squared. Nice. We'll use this a little bit um, to help us derive our trig functions.